Hello everyone! Welcome to my new series of videos. If you don't know me, I'm Greg Niemczuk. I'm a Polish classical concert pianist. And during the last two years, uh, I've been realizing this crazy project uh, of um, making videos with analysis lectures about all Chopin's music for piano published during his lifetime. Every week uh, since May 2020, every week I published one or two videos about each Chopin's piece of music with a thorough analysis um, but a quite simple analysis, so I tried to make it simple for everybody, not only for musicians. Um, so even if you're not a musician, you can uh, enjoy this analysis. But I suppose if you are here, you are probably interested in the Chopin's etudes. So I suppose you are a pianist, or you are the beginner, or you want to know how to practice those etudes, I decided to start a new a series of videos in which I'm going to publish a, a video about every single Chopin's etude with my personal hints and ideas of taken from my experience of how to practice these uh, difficult pieces. As you know, or maybe you don't know, but maybe you, you will know, um, I learned all the 24 Chopin statutes and I made the thorough videos about them. Mm, but in these videos I didn't focus so much on how to practice, but I focused on what's inside the music, what is the construction, what are the difficulties, because it's in interesting also for amateurs, also for not musicians at all. But I got a lot of messages from you asking me to do the thorough tutorials of how to practice. At first I thought, do we need another tutorial? I think there is quite a lot of books, uh, Alfred Cocteau, uh, is, which is the best, you know, his, um, his edition of Chopin's Etude, we have, in, for each etude we have the preparatory uh, exercises, and many others also on YouTube I think you can find. But because I got so many messages and so many comments of you, I decided, okay, I will share with you my uh, road through Chopin's Etudes and I will share with you my ways of how it was possible to create these videos about Etudes in such a short time. Uh, well, especially um, Etudes, but of course uh, some of ideas and some of ways of practicing which I absorb and I, I, I use uh, were very useful for me to create the whole project. Maybe one day I will also make a video about how I managed to uh, learn all Chopin's music in just two years. Of course it was not really two years because uh, uh, I played Chopin all my life. Well not all but since I was 18 at least. But anyway, today we focus on the general introduction to the new series and to general introduction to practice all the etudes. So today I'm going to focus on um, things that I used in every single etude. So how to practice efficiently and uh, what in my opinion is the most important in when you practice Chopin's etude to make fast Mm. Mm, improvement. So let's start. I have it written here so that I don't forget anything. The first thing, probably the most important in my strategy, is that I memorize immediately. In my opinion, to practice Chopin's etudes from the score makes absolutely no sense because they are too difficult, because um, you have to look uh, at your hands. 
because it's you know there are so many problems that if you try to sight read or if you try to read the score you add yourself an extra difficulty so the first thing that helped me was to memorize immediately how I memorize well I memorize every hand separately so I divide the piece into two hands because every single hand has different problems and first I have to solve the problem of each hand and then I can put them together it's like with marriage and I, I always laugh with my students I say you know um, the happy marriage is such a marriage then that before people are married they solve their own problems and they don't go into marriage with their own problems unsolved when they marry then uh, without any problems then they can work together from the beginning on the problems that they that appear during the marriage but before uh, if they have their problems it's you know some addictions some problems from the past sooner or later it will uh, cause some problems or another um, um, comparison would be good if we use the comparison to the fantastic symphonic orchestra the fantastic symphonic orchestra when they have a rehearsal you can be sure that each group of instruments know perfectly their parts uh, they are prepared so it's just like it's like with two hands we need to know every hand separately and we need to know it by memory how you can do it it's your um, choice you can decide that you memorize the whole piece each hand separately you can decide that you memorize four bars only right hand and left hand and you you practice it but the most important thing every time when I practice I never practice from the score I always practice from memory if it's difficult for you start from one bar memorize one bar the, the, the ways of memorizing it's not for this video there are many many but you should try to find some connection find some some sense find some something that makes sense to you what's in what's in there if you know harmony use the harmonic theory if you don't you can use you know things like white key black key and so on and so on anyway memorizing very short part and practicing uh, always from memory then as I said at first in each attitude I uh, uh, try to solve every problem of each hand separately there is probably only one attitude uh, opus 25 number 12 that both hands has the same problem but apart from this each attitude every hand has a different problem if you tell me that Etude Opus 10 number 1 has the problem only for the right hand, I will laugh. Because in my video analysis I already showed that the left hand with octaves has to sing a beautiful chorale. We need to make phrases, so we need to practice left hand alone as well. And right hand is so difficult that you must practice the right hand alone. I dare say that if you cannot play right hand alone without the left hand in the first etude, you will probably never play it well. Point number three, you have to make a strategy of your work. So you have to cut and divide, you have to divide the etude into phrases, uh, short parts. Usually it's two bars or four bars or eight bars maximum. If you need help, you can watch my analysis because I make a very easy, you know, division of the etudes. Then a uh, secret of making fast progresses is practice very short parts. Very short. Two bars maximum or four bars. Practicing means repeating, right? Repeating, solving problems, finding uh, fingering, changing fingering, uh, making it to tempo. Um, another good strategy is to start from the hardest part. Usually in etudes is the ending, but it depends because Opus 25, number 6, all is difficult, you know. Um, anyway, if you know 
if you play through, of course, first you can try to sight read each hand separately. If you find the most difficult part, if somebody tells you what is the most difficult, then you can start from this. If you don't know, you just start from the beginning. The problem with motivation. I think many of you have this problem that you lose motivation because you don't see the progress. Um, you know, the real motivation starts and uh, appears when we actually see the progress. We see we are improving. Something is better than yesterday or two days ago or one week ago. Then our motivation grows. So if you have this problem, take one phrase and spend one week in this one phrase or two phrases and don't play anything else. After one week you will know, you will see that this phrase is much better. Then your motivation will grow, then you can add another phrase and it will be better and better and better. What helped me? Of course I had a plan. I had a schedule written down in my paper and this was a strategy of what shall I practice, what is the most difficult and how much time will I need for this, for this, for this, for this. So, um, to write down a correct schedule is something that I also um, advise. Now, point number four. Very strange and shocking for you, maybe. I always tell it in, during master classes or in my students, and everybody, when I say it, everybody has the eyes like uh, plates, like, you know, <laughs> very big. People don't uh, believe me or they think I'm stupid crazy or that I don't know what I'm talking about. Now just listen. Don't, I say, don't practice difficult things. Don't practice the difficulties. Practice easy things. You should practice what sounds good. You should practice what you play well. You shouldn't practice what you play wrongly. And now I explain my point. This is the common mistake, and probably some of you will tell me in the comments that oh, I was also doing this, I'm so stupid, I was doing this. Usually young pianists especially, they practice like this. They have some difficult parts, so they repeat, they practice. And one time it didn't go through. It's, it, it, it's two times, three times, four times badly, five times badly, ten times badly, eleven times, oh yes, it finally worked. Then they repeat one more time, it finally worked. Okay, we can go uh, forward, we can practice, because it worked. So, what is the effect? They played ten times wrongly and two times in a good way. So, do you think tomorrow, I mean the, the day, the next day, it will be better or worse? It will be worse, because the brain got the message from you. Ten times badly, it means I have to play badly, because he repeated ten times. So it means the brain thinks, it means that should be like that. And this is the main reason why we don't make progresses. Practicing is repeating, repeating. But to make a progress for tomorrow, for one week, next week, you need to repeat something that you play well. Don't forget about it. Because people, you know, they, are, they get bored. Oh, I know it, I can go. No, 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 no. To make a real progress, you have to repeat. Sometimes in etudes you have to repeat one bar 100 times, 200 times, one hand even. You have to do it. This is Chopin etudes, you know. Uh, it's not an easy piece of cake. 200 times. But I always say to my students, if they get discouraged, I say, look, if you take a very small and difficult part, five notes even sometimes, they last one second. Or let's say two seconds even. If you repeat this 200 times, then it means you need 400 seconds to repeat that. How many minutes is this? You can count. It's not so many. It's not so many. So it's when we say, oh, you repeat this 200 times, we think, oh my God, I'm going to spend one hour on this. No, not at all. You need five minutes maybe. Not more than that. Um, okay. That's very, very important. So, what to do? First, solve the problem. First, solve the problem. So it means there is always a solution. You know what I say? If playing two hands together is too difficult for you, 
play one hand. If this one hand is too difficult for you, make it shorter. I always say that if there is always something that you can play, even if the hard, in the hardest etude, even one note. And if you can play one note well, you can add another one, you can play two notes well, and repeat them. You can play three, you can play four, repeat them many times. Tomorrow it will be better. Tomorrow you can add another one. That's not an easy path, but playing Chopin's etudes well is not an easy path. Another thing, don't push the tempo. Don't rush too, too early. Because when you start practicing and you play too fast, you don't, um, your brain is not controlling what you do. You are making mistakes. And make a mistake is something very bad in Chopin's etudes. Because every mistake, remember, every single mistake you make comes to your brain. If you repeat it two, three, four times, the brain is learning. Because the brain is learning not only good things, but also bad things. We don't have in our brain this intelligence of what's good, what's bad. It's you, by what you repeat, um, uh, who show the brain what's good. That's very, very important. So, play slowly, but how to play it faster? Only hand separately, that's the first thing, and only very short parts, I think. And you know what is very good, and I practice like this a lot? You can play uh, some part of the etude, small part of the etude, in the final tempo, probably already in the first practice session, really. But if you take four notes at first, let's say four notes, and you try to make them in tempo, you can do it. And then add another four and you can do eight. And you can do it one one hand and you can try to, to do it so that uh, to check the fingering to and to start to uh, to tell your brain that this is the tempo you are going to play. Mm. Very short parts you can, but longer parts you should play slower. And well, the last thing actually. Um, do you like Italian espresso coffee? Or maybe you are Italian, so you probably agree with me. I love Italian espresso coffee. And know what makes it special? It makes it the, the thing that makes so special the taste of Italian coffee is that every drop of coffee is full of taste because there is a lot of coffee. There is a, it's, it's a very big pressure, very short time. It's, you know, espresso, the name is express. It means that the coffee must be made but I don't know, a few seconds. And if you look at how it's ma being made, every single drop of the coffee is um, full of the coffee. The same is with practicing. Every single minute of your practicing should be effective, should be um, intelligent, and you must know what you are doing and where, you are, where are you going. First of all, this has to be switched off. At least the sound has to be switched off. You can make uh, yourself like, um, you know, practicing sessions, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Depends on your, your uh, patience, depends on your concentration. After these 40 minutes, you can look at your phone. Um, during the practicing, it, it's best if nobody disturbs you. It's best if nobody enters the room. Be, you should be concentrated concentrated 100% on what you are doing. This is uh, what makes um, great people greater. This, I think all the greatest people have this, this focus, you know, focus on one thing. Can be very short, as I say, you can schedule, okay, now I have 30 minutes, I'm going to practice four bars of this attitude, and don't practice anything else, just these four bars. Repeat them, repeat them, repeat them, repeat them. Um, solve problems. Two hands, one hand, together. And don't expect immediate effects. Remember that what you repeat, what you practice, will have the effect tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or in one week. Because what the real progress, what we need is sleeping. Everything happens in the brain. And when we sleep, that 
that is the time when in the brain the new cells are well not really cells but the connections between the new cells are being created so uh, sleep is also uh, a very important part of studying so these were general advices uh, not tech but i think also very very important and from now on uh, when i have time i will publish a video about each of the etudes with my exercises and i will tell what's difficult and you know how to practice that so well i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for being with me good luck with Chopin's etudes and please patiently wait for my videos about specific attitude and if you haven't watched my analysis you are welcome uh, to find them they are both i mean there is there are two uh, languages versions the polish version and an english version um, so if you find the polish version don't worry there is always an english version of this very video um, you can find playlists on my youtube as well and then you, each genre is on each um, playlist but there is also one playlist with all the music except mazurkas i think because mazurkas are on another playlist okay thank you very much and good luck thanks a lot bye bye